Broadway's my beat, from Times Square to Columbus Circle, the gaudiest, the most violent, the lonesomest mile in the world. Broadway's My Beat with Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. It comes to every street, and it comes to Broadway, the single moment when daytime dies, when night is just across the street. The great shadow blows in from the river, scatters, finds a corner, a doorway, a face, layers them with chill and darkness. And then it happens, the drench of neon and spinning lights and blare, and for those who need it, high above, stars and the city moon. Broadway flips a cigarette into the gutter and runs into the night. The night was hours old where I was. It came sooner and stayed longer. Basement apartment, West 49th. And the simple statement from a frightened man. I don't care what you think. That girl lying there. I didn't kill her. I didn't strangle her. The fact that you called the police, Mr. Lehigh, is a point in your favor, but... Uh, what, what do you think I'm playing with? Your game or something? A point in my favor? A point? What are you talking about points for? I didn't kill her. You know who this girl is? Sure I do. Irene Hall. She's an entertainer. Oh, what do you mean, oh, what about it? I know an entertainer that, that makes me a murderer. She was a cute personality, and she attracted me, so I, I made a date with her. How'd you happen to find her, Mr. Lee? I had her date with her at 11 o'clock, about a half hour ago. I knocked on the door. I heard her crying out like she was being hurt. I kicked in the door. Come here. Come on, come on, just step around here. Yeah, yeah. On that pocketbook on the floor. Uh, yeah. I'm getting lady's face powder on my shoes already from that mess. Feel her cheek. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, cold, huh? I'm going to tell you something. This girl's been dead for a couple of hours, at least that long. Are you trying to trick me or something? I'm telling you, I heard her cry out. She was yelling for help. You don't believe me, do you? You guys get a bang out of roughing up strangers. In Nobody's town. roughing you up. I'm just asking you a few questions, that's all. Like how long you've been a stranger in town? A week from Cleveland, the convention. Patent medicine, boys. I'm in vitamin concentrates. And this girl entertained at one of your meetings, is that right? Yeah. Came right after the magician last night. She did a Queen of Sheba. Got rolled out in a rug. A real cute personality. Now look, mister, whoever killed little Irene walked right out of that back door there to that courtyard. And then he walked away. Please, don't ask me any more questions. Leave me alone. I, I gotta have time to adjust my thoughts. Then the intrusion of those sounds of night that attend violence, the furtive gathering of crowd outside the basement apartment, and the sudden shriek of a woman's laughter from a party upstairs that for an instant stills the night, then bursts, drifts the street, and the screech that is the arrival of the official probers into death and their entrance into the apartment. Watch them briefly as they pry, as they lift possessions of the dead girl, hold them up to the light. Then as they bend over the spilled pocketbook, finger its contents, scrape the spilled powder off the floor into small envelopes. Then leave them and lead Myron Lehigh through, out of there. And a girl in the crowd clutches his coat, peers close into his face, grins, lets him go. And at headquarters, book Myron Lehigh on suspicion of murder. Give him the night to adjust his thoughts. Then in the squad room, throw a blanket over the cot and dream of sleep. And somewhere at dreams end, the voice that breaks it. Up, Danny. Up. Bright as the morning, so rise and shine alongside. Up, Danny. I heard you, Gino. I heard you. Uh, the surprises this day that has dawned has in store for you, Danny. The surprises. Like what? Like a container of steamy coffee? Hmm? Like a frosty crawler? which I sneaked out to the corner to get for you. Once information was passed to me, you slumbered on a steel cot. You go to the card table there, Danny. I laid it out for you. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> Tastes good. Thanks again. Hmm. A flower across the crawler. I thought it an added touch to start your day. A baby blue bachelor button to sport in your wrinkled lapel. You're very thoughtful, Gino. I try. <clears throat> well, you are sufficiently cleared of cobwebs, Danny, to indulge me in the events that have passed in the night? <clears throat> Go right ahead. 
Thank you. According to our good Dr. Sinsky, you were indeed correct in your diagnosis. Irene Hall had indeed been dead for a couple hours before your arrival. Death by strangulation. Bruises on the throat and other like symptoms. And what else? What else is that the deceased Irene Hall is an entertainer who was booked out of the Wentworth Theatrical Agency on West 47. As Mugovan was on night watch last night, he gathered this information from various sources. And what else did he gather? The notes various of our good detectives have made on the questioning of the people at the party upstairs from the killing. All have alibis, as have the other tenants. They are all sad. Miss Hall is dead. She was a cute girl, they said. Uh, where's Mugovan now? Waiting for your beck and call. Well, tell him to meet me in Myron Lehigh's cell. Well, yes, Gino. Uh, I enjoyed the breakfast you laid out for me. <laughs> Tired go, huh? What's the stuff supposed to do for you, Mr. Lehigh? Tones up the system with vitamins. Gives you the old pep and vinegar. That's why it's... Have a seat, Danny. Mr. Lehigh was just telling me about the patent medicine he peddles. It's called Tired Go because it makes you peppy. I could stand a whole bottle of the large economy size right now. You think it's fun spending a night in jail? You're a married man, Mr. Lehigh? Tell him, Mr. Lehigh. I told you, didn't I? The kid going to college on a scholarship, Danny. Yeah, but nice to have a kid like that. Uh, what do you want now? Start all over again, Mr. Lehigh. Tell us about last night. I told him I just finished telling Detective Mugovan. Lieutenant Clover wasn't here. I repeat a story very badly. You tell him. I had a date with Irene Hall. I was to meet her at her apartment at 11 o'clock. I knocked on the door. Irene screamed. I kicked in the door. Irene was dead. I called the police. What did you do last evening before you went to Miss Hall's place? Walked around, you know. No, I don't know. Do you know Danny? Walked around. Uh, that's what I'm telling you. I did. I don't know what else to call it in Cleveland. We call it walking around. Walking around doing what? Peddling tired go or what? Oh, look, mister, we don't peddle. We sell direct to cut rate chains. Peddling's What for... time did you have dinner? Early, five o'clock. Then what did you do? And don't tell us you were walking around. I had dinner and I, I went next door and I had a drink. One drink. Then I went to another bar or had another drink. Where were you at 9 o'clock? How do I know? You better know, Mr. Lehigh. 9 o'clock is when your date was strangled. Now, I don't know where you were. Mr. Clover doesn't know where you were. Somebody ought to know where you were. They really ought. It's important. Uh, I was in a bar. I was drinking. What bar? I was in a lot of bars on Broadway. I didn't look at their names. You heard that girl cry out, huh? Yeah, I heard her. What do you think? I'm lying to you? You still think that, don't you? Oh, look, look, fellas, I got a wife and a nice daughter. You told us, Mr. Lehigh. She got a scholarship to college. Your family must be real proud. And leave him. Leave the man whose tasting of a city has been distilled into violence and death, the accusation of murder. Leave him in a room whose walls have been scarred with chalked protests, the derision of the guilty, the pleading of the innocent. And leave him with the image of the girl the city had promised him, and whose death was an end to the promise. Go now to the Wentworth Theatrical Agency on West 47th to sift the night particles of a girl's life that had spun her dying, to assemble the shadows that had touched her in passing. Maybe you could do that here, in the office fashioned out of a brownstone hall bedroom. Here with the pictures of sparkling personalities clustered on yellowing walls. And the messages of love and gratitude scrawled on them. To Lori Wentworth, the sweetest agent of them all. To Lori, all of the best. To Lori, without whom... And Lori preening, purring in the warm glow of it all. My babies, Mr. Clover. Every one of them. Like little chicks. Little foundling chicks. <laughs> Cutie pies, huh? You get work for them, is that Miss Wentworth? Well, I try. Sometimes all our special talent isn't appreciated, but I try. A convention hits town, a lodge needs a few specialties to raise money for funds. I spent years scrounging around. Now the fundraisers are getting to know us. What about Irene Hall? Oh, cream of the crop was my little Irene. I'll miss her. You just don't know, Mr. Clover, how my little Irene is going to be missed. You just can't know. Can you tell me anything about her, anything that will help? Well, I heard on the radio that you're holding a killer. What else do you need to know about her? Where she came from, how she came to you, who her friends were, things like that. Well, where she came from, I never asked. All I know is one day, well, maybe three years ago, she was standing there in the doorway, right there, like she didn't know was it all right to come in. 
I took her hand in mine. I told her it was all right. Then she showed me the pictures she carried under her arm. And, well, I signed her right off. And not too long after, entertainment committees called me. As for her, didn't care what else I gave him, as long as I gave him Irene. And that's all you know about her? Well, I know I should never have booked her for that patent medicine blow-off. Then my Irene wouldn't be dead at the hands of a medicine man. Nothing more. Well, I know she didn't make the date I booked for her last night. A little private affair dinner party. How did you know that? Because Barbara phoned me. Said Irene hasn't showed up. And could she please do her specialty? Uh, that's the rug bit as the Queen of Sheba. Uh, I said, sure, Barbara. You do it. Barbara? Barbara Landon. Uh, that cutie pie, see? See up there? That one there, pictured in the feathers? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, she and Irene were buddies, covered for each other's routines in case one or the other had reason not to show up on a date. You have her address? Sure, sure. I write it down for you. And give her a message, huh? Tell her she can take all of Irene's routines now. Why you come bothering me, mister? I got enough to do around here. That I you told you, I want you to open the door to Miss Landon's room. All you had to do was beat on the door real loud, scream a few sayings. It wakes up that Miss Landon every time. I know from the times I got to do this just to call her to the hall phone. Oh, that Miss Landon's a sleeper. Here, I'll show you. Hey, Landon! Uh, just unlock it, huh? Yeah, yeah. Side saves wear and tear. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Perfume with this booze in the room. Man could get a hangover just from the aroma. Yeah, there she is, mister, stretched out on the bed. Go on, wake her. I want to stand here and watch you how you do it. Miss Landon, Miss... Well, go on, mister. Shake her up good. The load she must have souped up last night, you got to here, here. I'll show you how to get a reaction. Hey, Landon, hey. I'll leave her alone. But you said you... you... Oh, look. Look at her throat. Yeah, look. Dead. Strangled to death. are listening to Broadway's My Beat, written by Morton Fine and David Friedkin, and starring Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. Send at once for that wonderful free convention handbook offered by Time Magazine and CBS Radio. It will help you to follow the conventions and their procedures intelligently and easily. It's profusely illustrated and written by Time's top writers. All you have to do is send a postcard with your name and address to Time CBS. Chicago 90, Illinois. That's time, CBS, Chicago 90, Illinois. The midday light of May time flows gently. Broadway shimmers. Langer walks the street, rhythm to the pulsing of May wind, and its perfumed silk rustles softly. The hawkers yawn their spiels. The loudspeakers drone. There's the slow dance of litter in the gutters. A day in May. A day to melt in your mouth. A day to ride the rides, crowd the midway, toss the hoop, win the ham. So wait for it on the corner, kid. Hold it close. It can slip right through your fingers. For the girl sprawled across her bed, the day offers only her dying in the desolate room. The streakings of sunlight and shadow that pattern her body. And the wind that takes her hair, drifts it across her bruised throat. And this was all of Maytime for Barbara Landon. How long are we going to stand here just looking at her, mister? Shouldn't we... Don't worry about it. Well, I ain't worried. That's your department. All I know is the management would like me to clear up things like this quick spot. I told you, don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything the mister says... Oh, she's been dead for quite a while. I wouldn't know about such things. Tell me what you do know. I got a name. It's Marv Norman. I got a job managing this apartment house. I read papers, listen to the radio, collect the garbage of the tenants. Nights, I sit on the stoop and no one talks to me. 
This I'll tell you, oh, gay, carefree, There's lots of gentlemen friends. To her, I was a door knock, a mat with the word welcome. Bald on her here? Well, yes. In this apartment, we are now... Oh, mister. So, did... did Miss Landon have a caller last night? Through it. Other times, so. though. That's the hall phone, mister. Bother. Many thanks. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she's here. Hold on a minute, huh? Yeah. Guy asking for Miss Landon, mister. Cozy the way I played it, huh? Don't say she's dead. Don't say a cop's here. Don't go... Yeah, go far. Hello? Hey, what is this? How many watchdogs I gotta go through to get the barber? This is the police. Oh. Hey, what goes on with Barbara? Who are you? The Russ Field. Look, pal, all I'm doing is a social... Where are you now? The drugstore on 6th across from Bryant Park, Bromley's. Stay there. I'll be up in a while. How will I know you? Uh, I'm sporting a Hawaiian shirt, yellow background, brown pineapples on top. Look, I don't have to. Yeah, I'll wait. So again, the brief wait. Again, the men civically supported who attend the leavings of violent death. The white-coated ones, the blue-surged ones, the cigar smoker, and the funny fellow who thought of just the thing to say all the way down from headquarters. And they swarm, and they photograph, and they measure. Leave them. Death is in the hands of the professionals. Out into the streets now, and the ride to Bryant Park, and past the benches in back of the library, and the sitters, the students scanning the required reading, oldsters with eyes closed to the warming sun. Park the car, and to the drugstore. Lion's shirt is rummaging through a table mark. Any item in this display, ten... Uh, just looking. I'm waiting for some. I'm waiting for... I'm Danny Clover. You... What was all that mystery over the phone? She's dead. What are you talking? I saw her last night. How can you stand there and tell me that? I asked you. She's dead, and I was with her last night. She's going to lock me up? We'll see. Hey, well, I told you. I was with her. I was working. She never liked for me to call. I'm a waiter. She likes me. The tables where she worked last night, then met her a few blocks away. No, 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 no. That isn't it. She had a crazy notion, that's all. She didn't like me coming around for her. Afraid somebody will recognize me as a waiter and rib her, she goes out with a waiter. She was entertaining last night? Yeah, doing a sheep a bit for the... Con hey. Her friend Irene was strangled, too. Last night, too. And hey, now, wait a minute. Don't get me mixed you up. You know Irene? I met her once or twice, that's all. All right. You picked Barbara up last night. Uh, what did you do? About the same. Well, like what? Went for a ride, parked along the river. Did you drink? She did. She liked it. I brought along a bottle. She liked it, mister. I was her date. I brought along a bottle. You know something? I as good as killed her. How? Well, she asked me to come up to her place and finish the bottle. I didn't go. She was loaded. She needed a night to sleep it off. If I hadn't gone home, she'd be alive right this minute. You're not crazy about my story, huh? I got to go downtown? Yeah, for a while. Let's go. Danny Clover speaking. The Lieutenant Danny Clover? Gordon. Yes, I blush you remember. Gordon from Technical. Uh, come on down here, Lieutenant. You need help. When you close that door, smile, Lieutenant, like you're happy. And you're going to be happy. What do you got for me, Gordon? Manners, manners. Aren't you even going to ask how I am today? How I feel? How I slept last night? Whether I'm happy here amongst all my expensive equipment? All right, are you happy, Gordon? Listen, Lieutenant. You run around a lot. You meet a lot of people, all kinds of people. We've been working together for a long time. <laughs> what am I calling you Lieutenant for, Danny? What do you want? Happens a friend of mine's coming in from out of town. I've been writing him what a good time can be had in New York. I gotta show him a good time, Danny. And? 
You're trying to bait me, Lieutenant? In the squad room, they tell me you've got a little black book, Gordon. Just the other day, you were explaining the code beside the names. You're not going to help me, huh? You're going to let me make a jerk out of myself in front of my friend. What did you call me down here for, Gordon? I'll show you. Come here. Three microscopes. You want a peek or you want me to handle it for you? Lieutenant. You tell me. On the stage of microscope one, face powder spilled on the floor in the apartment of Irene Hall. On two, face powder taken from the face of Irene Hall. On three, face powder from the face of Barbara Landon. What about him? <laughs> what about him, the lieutenant says. The lieutenant who gets around. I'll tell you what about him. One and three match. One and two don't. Then the, the powder spilled out of that purse wasn't Irene's. It was Barbara's. Splendid. Do you mind if I add something? You don't mind. That spilled powder on the floor in Irene Hall's apartment didn't come out of Irene's purse. It was that other girl's. Barbara's. Thanks, Gordon. You helped a lot. You see what I mean? You've been around lots of girls. What about my out-of-town friend, Danny? Danny boy? You didn't help that much. Okay, this cell, guard. Open up. Thanks, I'll call you if I want you. In here, Russ. Are you uh, giving me a cellmate? Inside. Wake up, Mr. Lehigh. Hmm? Come on. Come on. Uh, uh. Uh, get up. I want you to meet somebody. Uh, this is uh, Russ Field, Mr. Lehigh. What do I have to meet him for? When am I getting out of here? You choose him, Mr. Lehigh? I'm not. You two have got something in common. Both of you are being held for a double murder, and of the same two girls. I'm here, Mr. Field. Let me shake your hand, brother. Am I glad to see you? Hey, they really go stir-crazy fast around here, Clover. Hey, get used to it, kid, because if one of us killed two girls, it's got to be you, because it wasn't me. He's the killer, Mr. Clover. I saw him. I saw him run out of there. You crazy, stinking liar. I'll break you up. Cut it out. Did you hear what he said? He said he saw him. Why didn't you tell me this before, Mr. Lehigh, that you saw him coming out of Irene's apartment? I didn't see him. I was lying. Come on, Clover. Let me get out of here. You've got your boy. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What? You said there were two girls. What two girls? Irene Holland. What two girls? A friend of Irene's. Her name was Barbara Landon. See, see, I, I don't even know. How could I kill her? A anyhow, I was in jail. You were in jail at midnight last night. Irene was killed about 9 o'clock last night. Barbara Landon was killed at 11. I, I, I didn't kill. I didn't kill. Poor guy. Yeah. <laughs> poor guy. What am I saying? A killer and I call him poor guy. Okay, Clover, I met your boy. You've had your fun. Let's get out of here. Russ, tell me again how you were out with Barbara last night. What you did. Well, sure. Met her, parked. She got loaded. I took her home. You met her from work, huh? Sure, just like I told you. No stops anywhere, huh? Just the park. Short stop. She got loaded fast. You gotta believe me. You gotta believe me. My wife, my, my kid going to college. You want a scholarship. You, you don't think the father of a smart kid like that could... I, 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 I didn't do it. I didn't. I didn't. Sloppy killer. A dad. What kind of killer are you, Russ? What? Barbara Landon was at Irene's apartment last night. What are you talking uh, Mr. about? Mr. Lehigh. What do you want? What do you want? What do you want? You tell me what happened last night. I had a date with Irene Hall. I was to meet her at her apartment at 11 o'clock. I knocked on the door. Irene screamed. I kicked in the door. Irene was dead. I called the police. I had a date with Irene Hall. I was to it meet her. It wasn't Irene you heard scream. It was Barbara. Our technical department showed me proof that Barbara was there. Guard? Go home, Mr. Lehigh. Go back to Cleveland. All I did was have a date with her. Go home. Well, my turn to go home now, huh? Wait a minute. We got a few more things to talk about. What? You 
didn't like Barbara, did you? No. Ah, she got drunk. She, she always got drunk. She was no fun. But Irene was different, wasn't she? A nice girl. Then why'd you kill her? You did kill her, Russ. Didn't she like you? You didn't mean to kill her, did you? No. You killed her, and you stayed with her. Uh, I'll tell you. I'll t- tell you why. I was talking to her. I was trying to tell her I didn't mean it. I was staying there just to make myself believe it didn't happen. And then when Barbara rang the bell... You didn't meet her after work, did you? And when Barbara came and rang the bell, I opened the door and tried to explain it to her. When I was talking, someone else knocked on the door. It must have been that little guy who was just here. Barbara started to scream. I hit her. She fell down, spilled everything all over the place. Friendly, I started to kick in the door. You dragged Barbara away. Yeah. Yeah, I, I strangled her in my car and poured booze all over her and took her home. Then I went home and I, I went to sleep. That's the way it was, huh? Just like I told you. I swear it was. Just like that. No. Now you're going to let me out of here. Now let me out. It's the street of the hunter, this Broadway, of the smile that's dropped at the tip of a hat. And the lights are flung from windows, out of doorways, and you walk a pavement spangled with a thousand colors. But between the lights, that's where darkness is. It's Broadway, the gaudiest, the most violent, the lonesomest mile in the world. Broadway. My beat. Broadway's My Beat stars Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover, with Charles Calvert as Tartaglia and Jack Crucian as Mugovan. The program was produced and directed by Elliot Lewis, with musical score composed and conducted by Alexander Courage. In tonight's story, High Everback was heard as Russ Field and Herb Butterfield as Myron Lehigh. Featured in the cast were Martha Wentworth, Ed Max, and Junius Matthews. This is only a rumor, but they say the Secretary of the Treasury recently visited Jack Benny's underground vault to reassure himself that there's a healthy cash reserve in case the government runs short. Well, this much is certain. America's in no danger of running short of laughs, just as long as Jack Benny time keeps rolling along Sunday nights on CBS Radio. Bill Anders speaking. And remember, my friend Irma livens your Sundays on the CBS Radio Network.